what it proved, Tommy. You, you don't need the money. It's not the money. It's not the money. It's me. It's me and the system. That was, of course, Faye Dunaway and Steve McQueen in the 1968 bank heist classic, The Thomas Crown Affair. Now, authorities say that movie to inspire a bank teller to commit one of the largest and most mysterious bank heists in Ohio history. His name was Theodore Conrad. Investigators say that in July of 1969, he ended his shift, he walked out of the bank with $215,000 in a paper bag, and he vanished. Just for context, that's the equivalent of about $1.7 million today. But for more than 50 years, no one knew he'd done it. Not until his daughter says he confessed on her, uh, to her on his deathbed just weeks before passing away from lung cancer in 2021. To her, he was dad, known under a different name, Thomas Randall. Now his daughter, Ashley, is sharing her story in a new podcast debuting today called Smokescreen, My Fugitive Dad. And Ashley Randall joins us now. Ashley, uh, we really appreciate you joining us this morning. I think this story is, one, it's wild, but two, people are completely fascinated by it. And, and I guess the question is the idea of doing the podcast. Why did you decide that this was how you wanted to do this? Thank you so much for having me. I knew that it was really important to tell my dad's whole story. There's so much more to a life than just one moment when you're 20 years old. And I think that finding Jonathan Hirsch, who's my co-host on My Fugitive Dad, really gave me the opportunity to tell this compelling story in an exciting medium. Podcasting allows incredible storytelling. It really feels like you're listening to a movie when you listen to this podcast. Well, and I also think that uh, the story itself feels like it's a movie on, on several different points throughout, including, I, just, I want to start with how you actually found this out. You, you talk about how your father was, uh, you guys watched NCIS and, and crime shows uh, very regularly, and that was watching an episode of NCIS in 2021 was how this first came to your attention. Explain. It was. Uh, my mom, dad, and I were sitting in the living room watching NCIS, and he looked over at us and really calmly said, ladies, um, just in case anything ever comes up, I had to change my name when I moved here. The authorities are probably still looking for me. I don't want to talk about it, but just so you know, in case it ever comes up, you're not blindsided. <laughs> and then we went back to NCIS. <laughs> okay, and then what? <laughs> So I realized that that was actually not enough information. And the next day, I sat down with him alone and really pushed him on finding out his name. If his name wasn't Tom Randall, I deserved to know my father's name and that I deserved to know my name. And he finally said that he would tell me as long as I promised not to look into it. And that's when he told me that his name was Ted Conrad. I obviously did not listen to him, and I did look into it. And that night at about 2.30 in the morning, alone in my childhood bedroom, I looked up Ted Conrad and then put in the word missing, figuring it's been 50 years, somebody might be looking for him. And that's when I saw the headline, like, Vault Teller heist. And I was absolutely floored. Like, could not have been more shocked. I think I said out loud just to the room, Oh my gosh, my life is a lifetime movie. <laughs> what, what, can I, the process of processing to some degree, where are you now versus where you were when you had that moment of realization? I'm definitely, I think, in a more solid place now. Honestly, working on this podcast, being able to essentially investigate my dad has helped me transition through a lot of the uncertainty and a lot of the grief of losing him. I think what's so fascinating about this project specifically is the psychology of a criminal is fascinating to me. But we hear a lot about it from criminals who were caught. And my dad was never caught. So being able to have those conversations with him and really delve into that psychology of what does it mean to be a fugitive on the run for 50 years, to have to keep that huge secret, but then also what other secrets do you then have to keep 
from your friends, from your family, I mean, from your wife and your child, right. to keep that original secret and protect yourself. Before I let you go. So it's been a healing journey, but yeah. fascinating. Just real quick before I let you go, and, and everybody should definitely listen, it's a fascinating story. Do we have any idea where the money went? I wish. Wouldn't it be great if there were just a big bag of money? I do not have one. I <laughs> wish I did. <laughs> you probably um, wouldn't be doing the podcast, it's, but. <laughs> it's, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it sounds like when he first moved here, he lived in a gorgeous apartment and didn't work all that much. And it was gone within a few years of just living a really nice life in Boston. Right. Oh, well, Ashley Randall, uh, Randall the story is fascinating. Um, the podcast is out today. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes. Thank you so much.